It was a season of great progress for the club, with the early expectations of another season of consolidation at best under the new manager, soon giving way to hopes of challenging in the top half of the table for European football, in a style that firmly embodied the West Ham United way. Fresh ideas and youthful exuberance were shown in the new management staff with the arrival of Gianfranco Zola and Steve Clark lifting the whole club. The duo, along with first team coach Kevin Keane, would benefit from a strong spine of England's internationals, namely Matthew Upson, Scott Parker, Carlton Cole and Robert Green. All showed once again why they have caught Fabio Capello's eye, with new recruits Hirita Ilunga and Valon Berami soon winning over the fans. Zola and Clark were also quick to turn to the next generation to progress through the ranks at the bowling ground, as Jack Collison, Freddie Sears and James Tompkins all continued their rapid progress, while junior Stanislas also showed he is one for the future. Once again, the club would be at the forefront of innovative and progressive ideas, investing in talents and potential in a bid to re-establish the club back amongst the elite of the Premier League. Back in the summer, transfer activity was quiet at the bowling ground. Norberto Solano and Freddie Lundberg were released by the club as Alan Kerbishley aimed to reduce the average age of the first-team squad. Fulham looked to their London rivals to make first-team players out of West Ham United squad members as Bobby Zamora and John Pansel made the trip west across the capital, the club recouping £7 million in the process. Looking to strengthen before the season kicked off, the club made the capture of the highly rated Swiss Valon Berami, their first big money signing of the season. Berami had played in all three of Switzerland's Euro 2008 games and his capture from Lazio cost in the region of £5 million. The only other piece of significant transfer action was the loan signing of goalkeeper Jan Lestovka to replace the outgoing reserve keeper Richard Wright. It was clear the young players like James Tompkins, Jack Collison and Freddie Sears were destined for a run in the coming campaign. The opening day of the season saw the club entertain Wigan in front of the onlooking England manager and it didn't take long for the international hopefuls to stake their claim on the national side. Ashton, back to goal, but he's shrugged off his marker. Oh, what about that finish from Dean Ashton? Just three minutes on the clock on the opening day of the season. And a wonderful goal already for Dean Ashton. West Ham corner. Oh, it might find Ashton at the back post unmarked. 2 0 up within 10 minutes, West Ham. What a start to the campaign for them. And what a start to the season for Dean Ashton. Heskey, surely the target with the long throw. Gets the flick on Heskey. Zaki! Oh, how about that for a way to announce yourself on English football? Amir Zaki, the Wigan new boy. What about that for a finish? An unchanged Hammers side made the journey north to face Manchester City. A red card due to two quick-fire yellows early in the game proved to be the difference. It's going to be Martin Petrov to hit this left-footed. Oh, what an effort. Green was rooted to the spot. And Petrov comes within a whisker of the opening goal. Martin Noble sent off for two bookable offences. That the first one for a deliberate handball. And the second for the challenge on Michael Johnson. And West Ham are down to 10 men. Again, good build-up play here by Manchester City. Petrov with the ball in. It's going to fall for Sturridge. And there's the opening goal. His first goal at Eastlands, his first goal of the season, and he took it brilliantly. Vedran Chormuka. Stephen Ireland's made a really good run here. They could be in behind them. It's pulled back for Alano. And didn't he pick his spot well? A wonderful finish from the Brazilian. And there's real daylight now between Manchester City and West Ham. Chaluka again. 
It's another wonderful pass to Ireland, and Alana is there once more. It's a carbon copy of the second goal, and Manchester City are home and host. Really intelligent running from Ireland, and he picked out the pass fantastically well. The Hammers were given a real shock in the second round of the Carlin Cup by Macclesfield. Extra time was needed before the goals began to flow for the men in Claret and Blue. And League 2, Macclesfield take the lead. What a start for them. Silencing Upton Park. Perfect delivery. And Evans just glancing his head at home. And get this vital equaliser. And there's your answer, and it's Lee Bowie who's got it. It's a powerful header beyond brain. And the Premier League side are level. Julien Faubert. Towards Ashton and Cole. And West Ham have turned this tie round. And could that be the goal that will see him through? to the third round. Ashton back across the face. Cole was there. Well, he's been involved in pretty much everything. Tonight, here's Ashton. Oh, and it'll be forced in through Hines. And that's his first goal in Claret and Blue for West Ham United. Ashton's Shot can cross. Hines diverting it home. Well done, sir. Cal Reed keeps going and scores. And it's emphatic in the end now for West Ham United. And Cal Reed is getting in on the act. Rob Green was back on match-winning duty again as he thwarted yet another penalty attempt and kept the club on course for victory over Blackburn Rovers and their new manager, former Hammers youngster, Paul Ince. Now the port's up and scores! Well, that's a good header by Davenport, it's really from a standing jump. Up he gets above his marker, heads home. And Nelson can't really get near him for the header. Davin pulls up above his marker and it's in the back of the net. Not the start for Lynch, wants it? He's looking for the run of Faubert. And he uses his pace very well. Get away from Warnock. And support's arriving, Noble. And Ashton! Black stays down! It's 2-0 to West Ham! Ashton onside from the time of the shot, but for me, he looks like an OG from Samba. Roberts, lovely spin. Roberts to score here! Oh, it's a great response from Blackburn. What a turn that was from Jason Roberts. And what a first half we're seeing here. Yeah, Pedersen had one sighter in the first half from pretty much the same position. Reed takes it this time, and handball penalty. Handball in the wall, and Mike Riley gives Blackburn a penalty within two minutes of the restart. Roberts against Green. He saved three penalties last season, and he saved another one here. Magnificent goalkeeping. Well, he guessed right, but there was a no acceleration into the run and the kick from Jason Roberts. No acceleration at all. Bob Green goes down, it's a great save, but not the greatest of strikes, to be honest, from Jason Roberts. Neil for Bellamy, Black stayed down, it's Craig Bellamy! Oh, what a goal! And what a return for Craig Bellamy! As soon as he got into that position, was there ever any doubt? What a finish! Robinson's got no chance. Welcome back, Craig Bellamy. A yellow card and a goal. It's about right for Craig, isn't it? Smashing strike, Robinson has no chance.
joy for Alan Kirbishley and West Ham. West Ham United's best start to a campaign in nine years saw them sat fifth in the league with three games played. It would be a dramatic couple of weeks for the Hammers. During the international break, the club saw the departure of Anton Ferdinand to Sunderland, followed swiftly by George McCartney's sale to the very same club on deadline day. The club moved quickly to secure the loan signings of left-back Herita Ilunga, who would prove hugely successful, and former Italy forward David Di Michele to help strengthen the squad. Walter Lopez also arrived to give extra defensive cover. The next day, the club accepted the surprise decision by Alan Kirbishley to call time on his West Ham United tenure. The former player had steered the club to safety at the end of the 2006-2007 campaign, but chose to resign after just four games of the new season. The club immediately began drawing up a list of possible replacements before the away trip to the Midlands to face West Brom. Despite the usual names being passed around the various media outlets, CEO Scott Duxbury surprised the football world with the appointments of Gianfranco Zola after being impressed by the likeable Italian during a meeting in Rome. The decision was backed unanimously by the board. The former Chelsea player and arguably the most gifted Premier League footballer of all time was to take over first team responsibilities after the West Brom game. You know, it's a uh, it's great honour for me to be involved in such a, an important job. And I can promise, as I said to the, to the board before, I will promise, I promise that I'm going to do all my best to make uh, the goodness of this club. Um, it's, a, it's a club that's got tradition, it's always expressed uh, good talents. So I'm here just to help to develop them, to develop the team to develop you know the players as a player as a as a single player first and also as a team that is my duty and uh, as i said i will do it uh, with uh, all myself giving to these uh, players uh, all my experience all my knowledge you know i'm here just to to be somebody good for them to to become better players that is my aim and as i said uh, i will do everything I can to succeed in this. But this wouldn't be the only piece of dramatic news. On the 12th of September, West Ham United shirt sponsor XL Holidays were placed in administration and were therefore no longer eligible to be associated with the club. So a dramatic new era began, wearing shirts covering the recently defunct sponsor and under the watchful eye of the new gaffer, the West Ham United players took to the field. Zola left the responsibilities to caretaker manager Kevin Keane and an entertaining and enthralling contest was played out in front of a captivated audience. One low note was that it was to be the last appearance of Dean Ashton for the season after an ankle injury suffered in training. This is Valero. West Brom's record signing. And Morrison! Oh, what a start for West Bromwich Albion! Ball comes in from Valero, low trajectory. And Morrison reacts quicker than Maddox and gets in front of him. Good downward header. Davenport. Dina Cayley! Kayleigh offside at the back post. Well, it's borderline, isn't it? The linesman's not interested. Free header from Dean McKayley, straight at green. Good save with his right hand. Falls nicely to Mark Noble, who has the simplest of tasks to put it into the unguarded net. Second corner for West Ham. Noble with it. Upson and Neil, and it's in! And West Ham take the lead! There's a deep corner to the far post. Upson, free header, back across goal. Brilliant left foot volley from the captain, Lucas Neal. Great technique, keeps it down, straight into the roof of the net. And once again, set pieces of the undoing for West Brom. Oh, the keeper spilled it, and he's taking his man down, it's a penalty! 
Well, the key to this is the early ball in from Brunt, but Green makes a right hash of it. Falls to Bonnet. Now, was there contact? I'm not so sure there was. I think he actually touched the ball, did Robert Green. Well, Bedner scored a penalty against Everton in the last home game. Bedner against Green. And he scores! 2-2! What a first half we've seen here. Kept his nerve. Just waited for the movement of Robert Green. A classic breakaway goal! Here comes the first ball into a wind-in, but managed to dig it out, shoot across Robert Green into the far corner to put West Brom into the lead. With the hugely significant appointments of Steve Clark as his number two in his first week, the manager began his tenure at home against the Newcastle side, still in shock after the departure of Kevin Keegan. David Di Michele made his first start for the club and would make an instant impact on the bowling faithful. And this is David Di Michele. Nice, oh, lovely, silky skills from Di Michele and deflected and in. The first goal of the Zola era at Upton Park, and it's an Italian David Di Michele who gets it. The deflection off Edgar, which deceived given. Noble. That's a lovely through ball, it's David Di Michele. And it's saved by the face of Shea Given, another chance here for Di Michele. Away from Taylor, and finds the finish. 2-0 West Ham, both to David Di Michele. The initial ball from Noble, fantastic vision from him. He didn't panic though, Di Michele, it would have been easy to. Kept his cool and found the finish. nice and it's David Di Michele who's on a hat-trick they can't keep up with him and it's finished by Adrington well how unselfish was that from David Di Michele and his afternoon just gets better and better he couldn't miss Matthew Adrington all the hard work done by David Di Michele this is Michael Owen oh that's vintage Michael Owen it could just be a consolation, but it's certainly one bat for Newcastle. He's been doing that for his whole career. West Ham United then made the short but fruitless trip around the M25 to face Watford in the Carling Cup, the only game that Robert Green would sit out all season. Fine move, but maybe deserved a goal. Lee Williamson to take the free kick here then for Watford. Oh, it's off Hayden Mullins and it's the opening goal for Watford. Very fortunate from their point of view and very unfortunate for Hayden Mullins and West Ham. That's a lovely ball for Etherington. Should have scored. Etherington's corner, Upson's header. And he's rattled the woodwork. It just won't go in tonight for West Ham. Despite the return of Craig Bellamy, the Welsh forward only made it onto the bench to face Fulham at Craven Cottage. The manager shuffling his side to the tune of seven changes following the performance at Vicarage Road. Here comes Edrington for West Ham. Can he find the cross, Edrington? Saved, but Cole should snatch in the rebound, he does. Edrington gets the assist. But it's Carlton Cole with his third goal of the season who gives West Ham the lead. Not going to miss that, is he? Noble's ball over the top. Etherington into the penalty area. And it's 2-0 to West Ham. And having created the first, Matthew Etherington gets the second. And now that's a bad tackle from Johnson. And so's that, and two yellows equals red. Sent off before half time, Andy Johnson. Oh no, is that handball by Lucas Neal? Yes, penalty. 
and there's not too many karma from 12 yards and Danny Murphy. Uh, I like the attitude of the players and the way they are trying to to play and you know is the is the right way. A very hectic month came to a close with the club sitting proudly in fifth position and just two points from the summit. The culmination of a new manager, new style of play and renewed optimism around the club. But October would be an extremely difficult month for the new manager and the team starting at home to Bolton. Gardner, all forward looking for Davis. Green is out and Robert Green's dropped it. And Kevin Davis has turned the ball in. Well, it was a terrible error by Robert Green. That was regulation stuff. And Kevin Davis was on hand to stab the ball in. Free kick for Bolton. McCann takes it. Not clear. Stanson. Good save by Green. Turned in by Cahill. Gary Cahill makes it 2 0 to Bolton Wanderers. Well, Steinson's volley was a good one. It was very well saved by Green, but he couldn't keep hold of it. Hetherington's corner. Upson with the header. Carlton Cole gets one back for West Ham United. Deep ball in. Upson stood his ground. And the ball was nodded back into the danger zone, and Cole scores. Now Bolton. Always dangerous from these. And Matthew Taylor has struck a wonderful goal. There's no stopping those. It was a great strike. Corner. And it's in. Michael Turner has turned it home. Van Persie. Still Arsenal. And the Bayor goes in. And the Bayor. It's turned in. But it's an own goal by Julian Forbear. Now here's a chance for Arsenal to wrap up the points here. And the Bayor scores for Arsenal. Well, oh, late challenge there by Cole. And Cole is off. He's been red carded. Here's Nani, away from Fletcher, Ronaldo! Cristiano Ronaldo for Manchester United, just as he did here against West Ham last year, opens the scoring. This million pounds buys you, that's what it buys you. Real quality from Berbatov. It was a forgettable month, but signs were there that Zola was trying to exert his own beliefs and style of play on the team. The honeymoon was over, but the journey had only just begun. With the transfer window shut, the manager had his hands tied with new signings, but he was able to capture the signature of the out-of-contract Diego Tristan on a free. He also let Nigel Quasi leave on loan to Championship High Flyers Birmingham. November began with a tricky trip to the Riverside. In the past, it hadn't been a happy hunting ground for the Hammers, and the Teesiders were in a bit of form going into the match. Downing. Pogatets and into the path of Bellamy. It's a good move this by West Ham. This is Barmorte. Mullins in space. And again. And in. Hayden Mullins with the opening goal for West Ham United. His first in the Premier League since November 2006, would you believe? Great finish. Sunshine moves away here. There's going to be Mido to hit it, and it's through the West Ham wall, and it is 1-1 at the Riverside. Mido with the goal with just seven minutes to go here. Still maybe West Ham United can win this. It's Faubert to cross. It's Bowie with the shot, what a save, Collison! Next up was the visit of Everton. And despite seeing the majority of the ball and hitting the target twice as many times as the Blues, it was the Merseysiders that came out on top in a score that flattered the visitors. Jack Collison underlined his burgeoning potential with his first goal for the club. Well, 
stretch, and Howard managed to get a fingertip to that. Good play by West Ham. And here's Bellamy. Results were still proving hard to come by for the new manager, and goals were going in at both ends. A nil-nil draw against Portsmouth was welcome news for the defence, though, the first clean sheet of the season. Nice turn by Jermaine Defoe, has crouched to aim at in the middle. It's still Jermaine Defoe! Really good save by Rob Green. And Bellamy has a chance here from just outside the penalty area to at the very least you would think test David James it's Bellamy to hit it David James was nowhere near it shot comes in and it's saved well effortlessly holds off the challenge and feeds Jermaine Defoe here that's an exquisite ball will we see an exquisite finish Jermaine Defoe good save Robert Green Whilst the teamwork, style of play and defensive aspects of the game were improving for the Hammers, the elusive win was still missing. A visit to see former teammate Anton Ferdinand seemed like the perfect place to arrest the slide. It came courtesy of Valon Berami's first strike in the Claret and Blue. Opportunities here for West Ham. And another clear as Berami and his fan his way in. A first West Ham goal. They just didn't clear it, Sunderland, and it eventually found its way into the back of the net. Took a big deflection or mistake. And it's led in Craig Bellamy, bearing down on goal. Around the goalkeeper, what can he do? Got support from Barami, 2-0, surely Barami. How's he hit the crossbar from there? That should have been game over. Teed him up, five yards out. They wasn't that pretty. Sometimes, but uh, the result was that what was was important today, and uh, and pleased for the boys. A winning end to the month saw the club stabilise their position in 13th. It was turning into a tight league, though, and the club were looking behind and above in equal measure. Tricky start to December began with a trip to Anfield to face tabletoppers Liverpool and a return home to face a rejuvenated Spurs. Here's Bellamy for West Ham. Oh! Well, Craig Bellamy within millimetres. Gerard whips it in. And again! Well, that's. A fantastic stop by Robert Green. At 
absolutely uh, enthralling football this with the shot and the response <sighs> can't call at the near post chance there it is yeah he just needs to get a, just a bit more glance on it a mighty ball to duck out green saves the longer away This is Lennon. What a bad cross. There's the header. Oh, it's Ledley King. Well, he doesn't get many, but that's a pretty good one. Lovely cross from Aaron Lennon. And the Spurs captain was there to give the visitors the lead. Here's Ohio, the substitute, lining up a shot. Oh, what about that? That will seal the points for Spurs. And it's young Jamie O'Hara who's pulled one out of the top draw. Staying in London, the Hammers made the short trip to Chelsea to face another of the title contenders. Once again, the club put in a great effort to come away with the result. Now Noble, suspicion of handball. It's Bellamy! West Ham in front against Chelsea. And boy, doesn't that taste sweet. Well, I sense that maybe somebody was coming. They're looking for an actual handball by Mark Noble. Maybe he just comes off the top of his arm and his shoulder. But he shows more determination than Bossingwa. Great vision to pick up Craig Bellamy. A little bit of luck with the deflection. What a cool finish that is. That part. It's an Elka! Centurion! 100 Premier League goals for Nicholas and Elka. The fans have been fantastic to me, and I have to say thank you very much to them. And uh, you know, I was blessed also with a, with a great performance from my team, and I'm very pleased. With them. The draw with Chelsea marks a significant point in the season. The club had now played Manchester United, Liverpool, and Chelsea away from the Bolin, leaving a trip to the Emirates, the only away Big Four trip left in the campaign. The festive period began with another of the top teams, Aston Villa. At the time, it's still challenging the big four for supremacy. It was a lucky deflection that would determine this result. Oh, yeah, again, with one of those little dashing runs. He's actually young, and Bonner Hall, the only player ahead of him. Milner to the left now. Milner. Oh, it's in! It's a free goal. Milner's shot. Looping up off Lucas Neal, Aston Villa in front, and Rob Green, a very unfortunate goalkeeper. There was no post-Christmas hangover as the Hammers went to the south coast and demolished Portsmouth. The persistent determination to play attractive football was finally reaping reward. Cramped on the far post, took it down beautifully. Oh, it's a superb goal! It's Bell Hatch at the end of a flowing move. Eight minutes gone, Pompey take the lead. Quickly taken to Cole, and he pulled it back for Collison. It's 1 1. 20 minutes gone. There's all kinds going on, and this time the referee has pointed to the penalty spot. West Ham can't believe it. In first half stoppage time, Mr. Bennett has awarded a penalty. Well, it was a push, wasn't it? Green's got an excellent record for saving penalties. Can he do it again? He didn't need to. An astonishing miss. Now Craig Bellamy. Cole is near post, and Collis is there again, and back off the post and in. Cole snaps up the rebound. West Hammer in front. And the header by Wilson against the post. Cranshaw gets possessed. 
Wilson on his Premier League debut, close to a goal, but Bellamy closer still at the other end. Can he finish? Not yet, but another opportunity, and this time he does. Two goals in the space of three minutes for West Ham United. Once you get Bellamy in this position, you ain't catching him. David James does quite well in the first instance, but he settles himself, goes for power. And that's West Ham 3-1, that's got to be the three points, you would think. Well, he's not smiling at the moment. Got off to a flying start, winning his first two games in charge. Since then, he's managed just one win in 13. But it looks as though that's about to change today. Here goes Bellamy. Screen at great speed into the path of Paul Morty. Cole is up with him. Bellamy! Brilliant goal! Eight minutes to go. West Ham can celebrate. Slides in at the right time. He makes his run into the box. A nice pullback from Bar Moulton. Bellamy does the rest. Certainly is a big win for us. I don't think it's been uh, our best performance, but uh, but uh, you know today was uh, one of those days where result matters very much. The year came to a close at the bowling ground with the visit of Stoke, with Matthew Upson skippering the side. The Hammers came from behind under bizarre circumstances, which saw the Potters fighting amongst themselves. Early corner for Stoke then. A fight, unmarked at the back post and the visitors lead. How did he find so much space, Abdulli Fai? And that is as easy a header as he'll have. Parker for West Ham, little chip into the area towards Cole. Might come to him again, Colton Cole. 1-1, what a finish. Sixth goal of the season, Colton Cole. What's going on here? Ricardo Fuller's upset about something. Being calmed down by his teammates. Has he been showing a red card? I think he has, you know. Ricardo Fuller has been sent off. What happens here? Well, that is stupid. A slap round the face of his own teammate, Andy Griffin. And he pays a very heavy price, Ricardo Fuller, and so does his team. On the corner, edge of the air. The ball into the feet of Cole, who turns and shoots. 2 0 West Ham. But Tristan is claiming it. Is that Diego Tristan's first goal for West Ham? It's Cole with the shot. And yes, it deflects off his own teammate. Not the way he'd have dreamt of scoring his first goal for the club, I'm sure. It, was, it wasn't just about uh, the way we were playing or whatever, it was just a little bit of confidence uh, was missing. And uh, today's uh, victory uh, will help us a lot. Back-to-back -back Premier League wins for the first time since Zola took charge. But with the squad playing how he wanted and getting the results, it was felt that this could be the turning point of the season and the club could now kick on. The new year began with the FA Cup and a tricky tie against the giant killers of the previous season, Barnsley. After defeating Chelsea and Liverpool in last season's competition, everyone at the club were acutely aware of the threat from the tights. It was also the hugely welcome sight for the first time since August 2007 of fit again Kieran Dyer. Perfect start for West Ham. Alunga completely free. Nobody picking him up. Bono tight. Goal for Noble, just forced it a little wide. Two for company, and looks to get beyond them. Pull back, penalty. No complaints from anybody in a Barnsley shirt. Only three ball from Cole, making it a little awkward for Mark Noble. He did really well to try and get beyond Al Mahamur. Noble, who won the spot kick. As a chance from 12 yards, and West Ham lead 2-0. Easy as you like from Mark Noble. 2-0 oh, up here and looking good against the Tykes. And it's in towards Cole, and that's three. And that should be that now 
for West Ham. And they're on their way to the fourth round of the FA Cup. Back in league action and a tough away test was next at St James's Park. Now here's Owen again from Enrique. Michael Owen. Well, you can't allow him too much space and too many chances too often because that's what Michael Owen will do to you. He just drifted into space, nobody picked him up. Everybody backed off and Robert Green was exposed. Now West Ham trying to come back, here's Bellamy. Oh, that's a great goal. That is a great goal by Craig Bellamy. Fantastic finish. Slipped to him by Parker. And Craig Bellamy lifted it past the goalkeeper brilliantly. Wonderful finish. 1-1. One, one. Lunga forward. Cole has avoided the offside trap. Oh, great strike by Colton Cole. That's a fantastic finish by a man in form. Everybody was watching and waiting for the flag. Colaccini tried to get in. Given tried to make the block. Chance here as Basong plays it in. Or rather in Zogbia. Now it's out to Colaccini. Played in again and turned into his own goal by Lucas Neal. But it won't count. It will not count. As Colaccini plays the ball in, there's a push there by... It was very close, uh, very tight for us. I mean, uh, I thought uh, the way we were playing, the way we were keeping the, uh, on the pitch, I thought we could have won the game. And I think probably we, we deserve to win. The Hammers achieved their first double of the season, beating fellow Londoners Fulham on Zamora and Konchesky's return to the bowling ground. West Ham have it, this is Neil. decent cross in, Pansel tries to turn it back and Di McKayley reads it and West Ham United have been gifted a goal no offside Pansel just not aware of who was around him David Di McKayley was the name of the man that was Koncheski now for Fulham. Paul Koncheski, what a goal by the former West Ham United man. It was an absolute screamer. Well, Robert Green went full length. Doesn't look too pleased, he should be. Koncheski, but he wants too much time. Here's Colton Cole, still Cole. Brought down by Koncheski, got to be a penalty, and it is. An easy one for Phil Dowd. Cole strong inside the area. Koncheski never got a touch on the ball. Schwarzer then. Against Noble, and Noble scores. Mark Noble for West Ham United. A 2 who but he's given it away here. And the chance on the counter-attack for West Ham. Di McKayley to Cole, and Cole slips it past Schwarzer. And the game is won surely for West Ham United. Well-timed ball, the finish was expert. An away trip to League One strugglers, Hartlepool saw the manager field a strong side, determined to make a good run at the most famous of trophies. Collison... Just trying to wriggle through, Barami! West Ham strike, 90 seconds before half-time. It's only his second goal for the club, Barami. But it was a deadly finish right in the corner. And Hartley Paula undone just before the break. Oh, the referee is looking at Nelson and the penalty is given here. The agony continues for Hartley Paul. Cole with the flick on. This is inside the box, Paul. And it is outside the box, to be perfectly honest. It wasn't inside the box, it was definitely an ball. It's Noble. And he tucks it away beautifully. Having scored penalties recently. 
including in the third round against Barnsley. West Ham with a huge slice of fortune. They lead 2-0 going into half-time. There wasn't a great deal of transfer activity for the Hammers in the January window. Using his knowledge of the Italian league, Zola picked up young winger Savio from Brescia for an undisclosed fee, while visitile Czech international Radislav Kovac arrived on loan from Spartak Moscow. With the media predicting the exodus of a host of key players, the club were true to their word and resisted overtures for several leading players. However, on their way out of the club were three squad members, Matthew Etherington and Hayden Mullins, two players from the promotion-winning side of 2004-2005, both left in search of first-team football. And the big story of the month happened when cash-rich Manchester City lured away Craig Bellamy, the Hammers doubling their investments in the process. Back on the field and the Hammers exacted revenge for the early season defeat by Hull with a blistering home display, one of the most complete performances of the season. And it's clear, but still dangerous. Cole brings it down inside the penalty area. Down goes Colton Cole. And a penalty, says referee Webb. It was Sam Ricketts with the foul. Cole went down and Noble with the opportunity. For one nil no. What a save! Matt Duke at full stretch on his Premier League debut, he saved the penalty. Guessed right, great save. Steve McCabe. Shot, and again he's been denied, this time by the goalkeeper. Not cleared yet though, Noble inside the area. Cole with the cross towards the back post, Duke again. Oh, but it's gone in this time. That's tough on the goalkeeper, but David Di Michele probably deserves his goal. Duke producing another save, but just palms it straight into the path of the Italian striker. Di Michele feeling cold. Gets it back as well. There's his cross. Oh, the woodwork has been rattled once more. It's Jack Collison this time. Lovely ball into him. Couldn't find the finish. Now Colton Cole bearing down on goal. Great opportunity for 2-0. And he's been denied twice there. Matt Duke has come up trumps for hole once more. Noble's free kick. Deep one, Di McKayley off the post and turned in for 2-0. Eventually the second goal has come. Di McKayley's at the back of the post. Colton Cole simply doesn't miss from there. West Ham had gone and beaten away from home since their loss at Manchester United in late October. A trip to the Emirates served a tough test to the impressive record, but a task the players met admirably. Off the line by Clichy. Well, it would have been a glorious time for the visitors to score. Collins with the header and Clichy in the right place. Benton is going to head it back across goal. Adebayor goes up. Flick goalwards by Torre and off the line. Well, the Arby's getting the credit from the cameraman, but I'm pretty sure that was Torre who hooked, hooked it goalwards. It was, and Collins involved again. Can they find the breakthrough? Adebayor! Just wide, they thought that was the moment, Arsenal. Well, having got goal side of his marker, Adebayor would have expected to score. Nasri. Lovely cross from Nasri, but it's been headed away again. Adebayor with the header! Another chance goes begging for Adebayor. What a month it had been. Comfortably through to the fifth round of the Cup, eight points to add to the increasingly impressive league tally in the first unbeaten month of the season. Things were looking good.
But all good things must come to an end. Manchester United are a tough proposition at the best of times. And with the champions in the form of their season, with 12 back-to-back -back clean sheets, it was going to be a difficult proposition. However, Zola's team put in a brave fight. Oh, great little layoff by Di Michele and that ball for Cole could be dangerous and he's got him behind Ferdinand who seemed to be dragging him back. And if the referee let play go on then thinking that uh, a goal could have resulted, Ferdinand may be a bit fortunate. Just wonder whether Cole actually is, he is he's looking to try and chip Van der Sar. Well, I don't think we've seen United at their very best. He's done well here, Lucas Neal. And a lovely turn by Di Michele, and then he turned into trouble. Neil's left foot shot. He tries to curl it in with his left foot. And I think in the end, Van... Goal by Ryan Giggs! That turned back the clock. Vintage Giggs. What a goal by Ryan Giggs. But that is a quality finish. Everyone, apart from Green, camped inside the Manchester United half. But only seconds remaining. And that is it, I would think. Collison's effort flies wide. I'm very, very happy for the performance of my player. It was a tough match, and I think they've been, they stood up uh, Manchester United in a very good way. Cup experts Middlesbrough welcomed the Hammers in the fifth round. Borough had made the last eight in the previous three seasons, and two teams fielding strong first 11s would prove an interesting prospect. Borough on the attack. Dygaard going forward. Chance for Downing. Just wide of the target. Stuart Downing going close there for Middlesbrough. Now the Hammers. This is Collison. Good play by Collison to Noble. Really good save. Corner taken quickly. Parker. Into the mix. Still West Ham with a chance. Di McKayley but cleared. O'Neill. Lifts the ball in, it was missed, and Downing heads it home. Stuart Downing puts Middlesbrough in front. Nothing Robert Green could do about it. Equaliser, and it's turned in by Arita Ilanga. Difficult ball for Middlesbrough to deal with, and it went all the way through to Ilanga. The away record came to a shuddering halt at the Reebok. With a two-minute double salvo from the home side, defeat was harsh on the visitors. Nice flick. Mark Davis just caught. A free kick in a really threatening position for Bolton Wanderers. Yeah, young Collinson there, very talented player, very promising player. But Davis drifts past him and uh, just catches him late on. It is Matt Taylor! It's fantastic! What a strike from Matt Taylor! The scourge of West Ham United from a free kick. This place is buzzing. Could get even better here for Bolton. Elmander. Gardner waiting inside the penalty area. Kevin Davis joining. It's 2 0. What a start for Bolton. West Ham United just haven't got out of the traps. And Bolton have punished them. 2 0. Sitting in at the moment. Scott Parker on the run. Cole trying to remain on side, just pings off the shins of Cole. Spectre, lovely ball in, and turned home by Scott Parker. And West Ham United are back in business. Pegrenier has let Parker get in front of him. He's just dawdling back, and there he is. Great chance, well taken. The cup replay at the Riverside brought the month to a close with a disappointing conclusion. It's Downing, it's a great effort, oh, what a start! It's a peach of a goal from Downing. He scored his first of the season in the original game in this tie. But not if Borough keep threatening like this, they've got a second. Brilliantly taken by Tunchai, 
He had no time to think about it. It fell out of the sky. Neither he nor Ali Adier were picked up. And Borough, who have been brilliant already, are two goals up in no time at all. Only two league games in the month, and as a result, there was little change in the positions. Manchester United winning the Carling Cup had freed up an additional league placing for European qualification, finished sixth, and the club would qualify for the newly branded Europa League. The Hammers brought their winless run to an end, keeping former Hammer Bellamy and the most expensive Premier League player Rubinho quiet for the full 90 minutes. The loss of Ballon Birami to a season-ending knee injury was to be a hammer blow, though. Collison. Ilunga. Collison wants the return ball. Here he is now. Saved well by Shea given down to his right-hand side. Good effort, though. There was a nasty injury here for Ballon Birami. That's a lovely ball. Savio, Carlton Carl. It's Savio again. Lovely West Ham move. Saved and Collison. Fine finish. West Ham lead. That's a lovely goal. Savio did ever so well, really made give and work, and there was a lot to do there for Jack Collison. I think that the team has worked very hard, and, uh, and they deserve to be there, to be honest. Um, actually, I can say we, we still have some credits to get, uh, but they deserve because they work very hard and they, they care, and, they, and so they, they, they are there because uh, they made it happen. The club achieved another double, this time over fellow European qualification chasers Wigan in a heated contest at the JJB. Cole, good tackle. Oh, but he's, has he been shown a yellow card, Carlton Cole? Noble. This is Parker. Oh, lovely this from West Ham. Glorious. Oh, and Cole finds the finish. What a goal that is. One of the best you'll see all season. One touch football from West Ham. And Colton Cole finds a finish. Parker, Noble and Di McKayley twice involved in the build-up, but what about the finish from Colton Cole? So, oh, second yellow card for Cole, and he's been sent off. Went in with a high foot, it already been booked, and three minutes after scoring, Colton Cole's been sent off. Parker turning away from Melchior, but that was a hefty challenge from Lee Catamol. Parker in real pain. And what's the punishment? It's red. Oh, jumped in from behind, can have no complaints, Lee Catamol. A third clean sheet in a row was achieved with the visit of a West Brom side, scrapping for their life at the foot of the table. Here's Samuel. A fine block. March came to a close at Ewood Park with another draw to conclude an unbeaten month. Hedison's long throw, Samba's in there, Chief looking to try and turn and finds the back of the net. That's not going to count, he's offside, I think. And he flag up on this near side, and correctly so. El Hadjif clearly in an offside position. Noble looks for support. Bowen Morte's made a run now, he's been found as well. Tristan waits. And it's back to Noble. Oh, that's a brilliant finish. And he's got every right to look happy. Hint of offside there when Noble played the ball to Bowen Morte. Tristan with the presence of mind to find Noble, and you certainly can't argue about the finish. Beautiful with the outside of his right boot. Pedersen with yet another long throw in. It's going to break here for Andrews. 
And Blackburn Rovers are back on level terms here at Ewood Park. Keith Andrews scores just six minutes after coming on as a half-time sub. Ilunga got ahead to it, but it only fell into the path of Andrews. Another long ball. Samba's got ahead to it, slipped as he hit it. Green spilt it. Duke turns it home, but he's offside. It's not going to count. The club were creeping up the table, and with the way the FA Cup result was shaping up, it was likely that seventh place could be enough to secure Europa League qualification. It was a day of firsts when Sunderland came to visit at the beginning of April, as both debutants Junior Stanislas and James Tompkins got their first goals for the club. Tristan just keeps it in, Dean McKayley flicks it on, this is Boamorte, could be a chance here for West Ham United. Boamorte, and it's turned in by Junior Stanislas. On his full debut for West Ham United, Lovely piece of play this by Boa Morty. Perfect pass. Sets it up for Stanislas. And his first goal for West Ham United. Noble. Gordon stays on his line. And James Tompkins has headed home. And Tompkins gets his first goal for the club. Well, it's an afternoon for the youngsters at the Berlin ground. Great header by Tompkins. West Ham lead 2 0. With the campaign reaching its conclusion, the match against local rival Spurs would be a traditional end of season six pointer. Choluka. Modric and now Pavlyuchenko, 1-0 Spurs. He turned on a sixpence there, the Russian. Pavlyuchenko again, Aaron Lennon in acres of space, surely this is two. Well done, Green, King with the shot off the line by Collins. The games were not getting any easier as high flyers Aston Villa were next up for a United side desperate for points on the board. Look how far Brad Friedo comes off his line to make it difficult for the youngster. And what a brilliant piece of keeping that is. Heskey has his first Villa Park goal. A sweeping move, finished off by Emil Heskey. Rescue, really. Our, our result and also the way the team, after they scored, we scored, they tried to win the game and that is very, very important. A tough month came to a close with a battling display against FA Cup finalist Chelsea. A solitary goal, the difference here. Tristan just sets up Kieran Dice, just getting away from him, and that's really a tame finish. Right into the mix by Noble, and Czech was nowhere near it. Tristan off the line by Mikel. So close to the opening goal. Czech was simply crowded out. Look. He's coming, he stopped, he don't get there, and it's off the line. The season. Ilunga. Oh, Tristan. Off against Ivanovic, Ilunga. Oh, as he pulled back, penalty. Kalu pulling back Ilunga. Crazy, really. The man who scored the goal for Chelsea has given away a penalty. Well, that was a clear penalty. Holds it up well, Tristan. Little flick round the corner. Ilunga gets the wrong side of Kalu. And he's caught out, similar to the run with Lampard at the other end when they got beyond. Uh, really, no hesitation for the referee, Mike Bean. It's that one spot on. In front of the Chelsea fans. Mark Noble against Petr Cech. Oh, saved brilliantly by Cech, to his left. And Cech celebrates in front of the Chelsea fans, their lead is intact. It was a big task what I asked the players today, and uh, and so if they have they have all my appreciation for what they're doing, and I'm sure uh, I'm sure we're gonna have uh, better uh, better opportunities.
At the end of April, the club were losing their grip slightly on a seventh place finish that would guarantee Europa League football next season. Whatever the end result, it was clear the club and the team were making progress and playing great football to boot. And this was again in evidence as the Hammers went to the Britannia Stadium and picked up all three points with an exquisite free kick from informed Diego Tristan. The lap with the long throw for Stoke. And Green goes up and it's turned into the goal, but it's not going to count. Fuller's challenge on the goalkeeper means the goal is disallowed. Boamorte. Chance here, it's turned home, but that isn't going to count either. Dean McKayley's shot turned down. Handball has been given, I think. Great effort. Fantastic effort. And Diego Tristan, who was penalised for handball earlier to deny Di McKayley, makes amends. Wonderful strike from Diego Tristan. Oh, good effort. Di McKayley just over the top. It was neat. Inventive football. And Dean McKayley putting the ball just over. The Hammers were caught cold by title chasing Liverpool a week later. Oh, just gets under it, doesn't he? Oh, ho, 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 yes. And now Liverpool have a penalty. You cannot grab a player's shirt in the box and get away with it. Can he beat Robert Green from the spot? No, he can't, but he can follow up, and Liverpool have their two-goal lead. Carragher's slipped, chance here for West Ham. Dimi Cayley, can he pull them back into it? What a blunder by Dimi Cayley. He's looking for a penalty, but I think he just slipped there. And you see now when Dimi Cayley doesn't quite get across Carragher, and he does extra touch with his left boot has a dive and the referee really has no option. You know, play teams like that, it's difficult because every single opportunity you give them, they, they punish you. And uh, so it's been today. And so with two games remaining, the club were two points from the magic seventh place. It was a tall order, but they needed to get a result at Goodison Park against an Everton side fighting their own battle for fifth place. McKay. Here's Kovac. It's a decent attempt. It's a magnificent goal. It's a goal from absolutely nothing by Radislav Kovac. It's his first in the Premier League for West Ham United. And what a goal it was. He controls the ball, looks up, has a look where the goals are, and he smashes it. The ball always veering away from Tim Howard. He had absolutely no chance of stopping this. It's Cahill, Cahill goes down, challenge there by Tompkins. It is a penalty to Everton. And it is a red card as well for James Tompkins. The 20-year-old is dismissed for denying a clear good goal-scoring opportunity. Well, there's no doubt about the trip from Tompkins. I don't think it warranted a red card. It's Sahar who's made it 1-1. The returning Louis Saha with the equalising goal. Six of Tim Cahill's Premier League goals this season have come from headers. It's Yobo, it's 2-1 here to Everton. Franco Zola still finding something to smile about. Pienaar now, brilliantly done by Steven Pienaar. He's looking for Saha, that's number three for Everton. A second for Louis Saha, it's deja vu. It's just the scoreline at Upton Park back in November. To be honest, we didn't start in the best way, but we got a goal and uh, we were holding up uh, very well. And the penalty just uh, is, uh, came at the wrong moment. It wasn't to be, but it was still a great achievement by the team and they bid farewell to the season in front of their home fans with a chance to have a bearing on the relegation issue against the Borough side fighting for their Premier League life. And Chai made it back. 
wasn't a bad job. The goalkeeper could only see it crash off the bar. Stanislas hardly me backlift on the shot. Keeper was well beaten. It's Boa Morte who's swapped wings. Ilunga overlaps. The defender has lost him. Right across the area. Oh, West Ham take the lead. It's all going horribly wrong for Middlesbrough. Carlton Cole announces his return to the West Ham team with a well-taken goal. Great ball in here. Great movement from Ilunga. Simple cut through. How many? There's four Borough players in the six-yard box. None of them are marking a West Ham player. You mark players in the box because players score goals. Bates. Dunshine. He works the space. He's got a chance to shoot here. Passes on the responsibility. Oh, there's a lifeline for Middlesbrough. O'Neill leading from the front. One more and you never know. Dyer. Neil. It's a bit of the ball, Kovac tees it up, Stanislas, can he find the gap? Oh, dreadful goalkeeping! You don't want that on the final day when your Premier League life is depending on it. Through the hands of Jones and maybe Premier League status is slipping through the hands of Middlesbrough. You can see he's got the space, central area, comes through a real forest of legs, and whether Jones sees this particularly late, I don't quite know. But his hand, definitely his right hand, should be a lot stronger behind that. What a season it had been. The club had returned to its roots, rekindling the style of play of some of the great Hammers teams of yesteryear. The manager, vindicated by his decision to play football above all else, rightly won plaudits throughout the game. Despite just missing out on European football for next season, the club can boast a great blend of experienced internationals mixed in with an array of young, hungry, homegrown talent. This squad looks set to be nurtured even more under the expert tuition of one of the most exciting management combinations in Premier League football. As such, the club are well equipped to open a bright new chapter in the history of West Ham United. And if the 2008-2009 season is anything to go by, there is much to look forward to in the years to come.